news to you this Saturday night. We are now having Sunday school on Saturday night. So great to have you with us. We trust you have had a good day and you're looking forward to a good day tomorrow. The title of our lesson today is An Empowered People. Our central truth is God calls and empowers Christians to overcome. Our key verse is from 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So it's a very good lesson. I really enjoyed studying it and empowered people. Well, you know, we hear a lot about being empowered, you know, for years now in leadership. You talk about uh, empowerment and all. First, I think I want us to go ahead and go to the Lord and thank Him and believe Him to help us to minister His Word. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful privilege to know you and to serve you. Lord, I thank you for the privilege to minister this Word tonight, and I'm trusting you, believe you, to help us to, as we learn together, we'll be more like you, trusting and believing in you with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our spirit, every individual that sees this and hears this. Lord, may they be touched and we all be just so impacted that we want to live closer to you that has that kind of an impact on our lives that as we study your word, we want to be closer and draw near to you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So the word empower, you think of a lot of times on a job, how that an employer will empower an employee to do something they wouldn't normally have the uh, authority to do. I know I remember in working in banking, we would have somebody they would send over that while maybe our manager was going to be gone, they would send somebody from another branch. And though they ordinarily would not have the powers of a branch manager that day, they were empowered to make decisions they normally wouldn't. They could care, we could run more smoothly if we had situations come up. Well, they, we had somebody empowered to do that work. But, you know, the Lord has empowered us, and that's what uh, that we're speaking of here in the scriptures, that he has empowered us, that we can have an un uninterrupted power source with him. You know, we have our power can be uh, interrupted as far as in the natural with power tools you're running. If suddenly electricity goes off, and well, that power tool won't help you. Or you take a hand tool, you know, if you're not there to power it like a saw, if you're not there to power it, it's, it's, it's going to be useless. But we are so thankful that the Lord has called us to live for Him, love Him, and serve Him, and He has empowered us to do that. He cleanses us from sin, makes our life, takes sin out of our life, and we have to daily try to keep sin out of our life, love the Lord and serve Him, and if there are times that we find out that we, we fail, we immediately go to the Lord, and He then again empowers us with His power from on high. It brings out the example here of, of a battery, uh, you know, a, a battery that's, uh, we don't really see it, you know, when we're driving along, we don't see it, but we do see on the dials, we can read, we can see if it's performing or not, but if, if you know, if your battery, if, if or if somebody happens to steal your battery, uh, you, you won't accept for a miracle, you're not going to be going anywhere. But like we need the power of God in order to walk with Him every day. Without this walk with Him every day, our life is going to be stymied. We won't be the Christian that God wants us to be. Because in fact, I don't know how you could go on and remain. As in fact, as Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having left. Uh, you know, he having loved this, he's left me, having loved this. He's loved the world, and he's walked away from from God. So it is possible for that to happen. All right, so we're going to get into our lesson, God Provides Power for Godliness. In attempting to live by the law, the people of Israel proved that it was something that you couldn't fulfill. You just couldn't do it, and that was one of the things that the law did. It pointed you to the, the understanding that we couldn't keep it by ourselves. We have to have the Lord. We must have Him. and try. He, is, he empowers us. He, we have power from Him, not from us, so we must stay connected. He is an uninterrupted power source. He will never go out. So we stay connected to Him, and we're going to, we can be faithful and true to Him, live a life that is pleasing and glorifies and honors Him. And that's what He was telling us, that, we, 
that he had seen, you know, he had been with Christ, and this was the thing, it wasn't just he had something to tell that he had heard that was about it, but he had actually been there. And so these letters that he's written to the, uh, to the churches, this is what is so terrific, is that we still have, we have this letter, and it's blessing our hearts, these two letters that he has written. He may have written more, but these are the two that we know about. So Peter, like the other Jewish Christians of the Jerusalem church, had once viewed the gospel as reserved for the Jews. But he, he found out different from that. The Lord showed him. He, he showed him in a vision. He made it clear to him that everybody could be saved, no matter if they were a Jew or a Gentile. He loved them, and they could be saved. So we're praise the Lord for that. That includes us. I'm a Gentile, and I'm thankful that he includes us. So he gave us power to live a godly life, no matter the what situation we were in or who the people were, if they were Jews or Gentiles, that we would live a godly life and we would share the gospel everywhere we went, no matter who it was, where it was. God's power brings spiritual growth. You know, there's nothing, it's really a sad, I don't say nothing worse, but it could be worse. It's, it's sad to see a person who never matures spiritually. They just stay the same. I remember one time when before I was married, I was conducting uh, a service over at, uh, at a neighboring town, and this man, he made a comment, something uh, that really unusual that had happened, and, and that's, it really made a deep impression on him. And the pastor and his wife told me later, said that this man has never grown past that, that one experience, one thing that had happened, and so that's all he can talk about. He said nothing else. There's no other experience he ever can refer to. Or no, he doesn't have a real relationship with the Lord. He just goes back to this one thing that made such an impression on him. You know, those things are wonderful experiences that we have, and something makes a real impression on our life. But we need to go on, be able to, and mature in the Lord, have more than that. Peter tells us to make every effort to grow in our faith, our faith and our trust in God. You know, if if we face a trial of some kind and we can't hold up, we're, we're not strong, we're not faithful and true to the Lord if we blame God and we feel like he shouldn't have let this happen to me. But instead to be like the Apostle Paul when he said, he, he, I'm not giving up, giving in, or giving out. He was going to remain faithful. Now Peter is somebody that we can look at and be encouraged that, that he had fallen so badly when he had actually denied the Lord. And he never dreamed he would do that. He never, even though the Lord had told him he, it was going to, he was going to be tested, he was going to be tempted, he didn't, he didn't pay attention, he didn't listen. But you know, he learned from that when the Lord said, I've prayed for you. Jesus said, I've prayed for you. And when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. He told, it gave him hope when he, real, when he had sinned. He never dreamed he would. He never dreamed he would deny the Lord. But when he did, and the Lord looked at him, I mean, Peter was so humbled, and he, he knew me. And I did. I thought I knew me, but he said I didn't know me. But he surrendered himself to the Lord. He repented, and he was the Lord when he called the disciples. He said, "Tell the disciples and Peter." He made sure that Peter knew. And here he is now, a, a really a leader in the church. He was one of the main leaders. He didn't ever look back on that. You never see him reading say, "I'm a horrible person. This is what I did one time." He didn't live in the past. Yes, he was so ashamed of it. And, and he hated it. His heart was broken that he had done it. But he had repented, and he got over that. He didn't say, I can't do anything for God because of what I did back there. No, he didn't live in the past. He forgot those things that were behind. Yes, they were in his memory. He knew it happened. But the Lord didn't always remind him, well, you know what you did. I, I have never forgotten it. The Lord never did that. But instead, he was completely forgiven. And here he is now, instructing the church and reminding them that we have to keep on. We have to grow. We have to have a spiritual growth. I want to read a scripture that really uh, it really uh, says it here. He said here, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You know, we want to be partakers of that. Our own nature is absolutely uh, shocking sometimes. We realize the thoughts, the things we have, and you know, this flesh we have to deal with. So did, so did Peter. But he said that you might escape partaker, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 
And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. He went on to say how that we need to make our calling and election sure. We had to be diligent about this. So people had thought, well, there's just no possibility of ever losing out, but uh, this seems to indicate that definitely that we need we need to make every effort to pursue. I mean, when you talk about pursuing something, uh, that that's taking some effort and that's taking some really some true and due diligence. So when that word pursue, I, I have I wrote that out, wrote it out, and, and circled it that, to get that in in our in our make sure in this lesson that we need to be effective. We need to be effective children of God, and that's how if we pursue these things, we're diligent to pursue these things that Peter had mentioned here. That that's what is going to help us. That we're going to be faithful. That we won't we won't we don't want to disappoint the Lord, and we want to be reaching others. We want them to see that Jesus makes a difference in a life, and they're going to see it in us. They may not read the Bible, but they are reading us. People say, "Well, don't don't look at me." Well, they are going to look at us, and that's what the Lord tells us that we are to make our calling and election sure we're to live a life of godliness and, and honesty and righteousness where in business dealings or whether whether anyone's watching or not that we're being faithful to the Lord so Peter said make every effort in this or do due diligence that he said in time it, every effort again and again he would use those words this time to confirming our calling in Christ yet you are not doing it alone and we need not be discouraged because God's rich welcome awaits us. I like that. The author brought that out. Yes, the Lord is waiting to see us. He's excited to see us, that we're making it, that we're being faithful. He's pulling for us. When he sees us going through a time of just dryness and seems like you just struggle and you just are having a difficult time maybe in prayer and, and wanting to seek the Lord and you feel like you're not getting anywhere. But he sees us when we keep on working. We keep on praying and seeking his face and believing him. Lord, I'm going to live for you. And the very fact that we're having that struggle sometimes, it is Satan coming against us because we are being effective and he's wanting to make us ineffective. But we don't want to fall to him. We want to be faithful. The believer who lives a faithful life will receive an abundant welcome with everlasting fellowship with God. That's going to be the day when we hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant, enter in. May we never forget that that day is coming. May we not view it as just that's just something on. But no, we need sometimes if we, if we don't look be, to, beyond to that time and what a, a great welcoming that will be. That's one thing encourages to keep on being faithful rather than to be short-sighted. This is what happens sometimes when people become short-sighted, then they get caught up in all of the things of the world, you know, the, the trinkets and all that would, that would distract and bring people down. Peter said, uh, we can sense that Peter longed for assurance that his readers would remember their calling and continue in the faith. That was one thing he was so concerned. He, and he knew that they had people that were coming into the church, into, and, and he was very disturbed about the people that were not teaching truth. It was fables and just all these stories and things that may sound exciting, but they were not truth. And that was one thing that deeply disturbed him. He did not let the word of God slip. The truth of the gospel's rich truths bear repeated study and application no matter how well how well a believer may know them. It's not it's not that well I've read the Bible over again. I have too. But I tell you what, I read it every single day. In fact I like to read the chronological uh, in chronological order and that's what I do year after year. I want to keep these things fresh in my mind. He said to make your calling and election sure, give due diligence. I know I have repeated this but I think it's so important and this is not that we live in fear uh, in fear but it's just that we continue that we make sure that we are committed to the gospel and you know Peter was so committed to the gospel of preaching the truth he was ready to lay down his life in service to Christ which he did and but you look where he you can look at what how he failed we don't want to look at that he 
You know, he put those things just like as Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind. He had things in his background he didn't like. He wished it had never happened, but it did. And it had happened, but he kept moving forward. And he didn't say, uh, I, I, I can't be, I can't really uh, preach, and I can't really do anything because of what I did. No, the past did not drag him down, but it made him want to do more. Not, you know, we can't save ourselves, and we can't earn our way, but we can be totally committed, and that's what Paul and what Peter were, were doing here. It mentions here in our, our last part, divine revelation. Now, Peter emphasized the truth that what he was teaching, reminding his, his readers that he wasn't teaching cleverly created stories, but the gospel of Jesus Christ, of which he said, I'm an eyewitness. He was so uh, intent on when building, you know, that he wanted to, get to know the, the, the correct foundation, the strong foundation. It was that in Jesus Christ. And he said, I was an eyewitness. I know him. And he told at the time of the transfiguration or when he was changed before them. And, and it was it was just uh, his garments glistened. And it was just a, a, a momentous time for him to see. He said, I just want you to build on the good found on the right foundation. There's no other foundation but Jesus Christ. This is the only way we can go to heaven. We can live uh, live with the Lord forever is that we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. He said, we don't want to make a mistake of building on a falsehood. And as I alluded to earlier, he was deeply concerned about some of the false teachers that were coming in. And sometimes they just sounded so, it sounded so good what they had to say. But they were clever tales and things that, had, that they had made up. But unlike false doctrines, Christian doctrine is drawn from the truths of God's word. That's something we can depend on. And as Peter said, I'm an eyewitness. I know this is true. And you know what? There's a difference when a person has a has an experience. Then when so he said, "I know, I've been there, I saw it. I, I I am an eyewitness," as opposed to somebody that just has an argument. He had an experience with the Lord. He had changed his life. He knew what it was to be forgiven, even after he had done so wrong. He it was wonderful to fellowship with Christ and listen to his teaching, and then to be able to pass it on in written form. We do not build our lives on fables when we build our lives on Scripture. We are building on the solid foundation of truth. The people that wrote these things, they were like, we would say, ordinary people just like us. But they were moved of the Holy Spirit. They felt that unction of the Spirit when he gave them something to write. They wrote it not really, maybe always understanding what they were writing. And actually the prophets, they were doing prophecies, they didn't see that it was going to be sometimes hundreds of years and those prophecies coming to pass. But they were faithful to say what God had impressed on their hearts when they felt this anointing. They had written it down. Thank the Lord for the written. It's one thing to say it, and that's important, but there's nothing like going ahead and writing it down. I'm so glad that we're not hearing things that just, you know, we have no written word, but just things can get really confused if it's just passed down. You know, you play that game as a kid called gossip and, Somebody would tell the first person something, and by the time it got to maybe the tenth person, it was nothing what, how it had started out. So this is what can happen if we, if we had not had the written word of God. And it's so important to be faithful to the house of God, to read, read our Bible and know. And when the minister preaches, many of them will say sometimes, don't just take my word, read the Bible for yourself so you will know that I'm telling you the truth. So it's so good to know the Lord and to know that we know the truth and it is the truth that will set us free. In closing, it said the lesson it asks, what is God saying to us? When we put all the elements of the study together, the idea of hope emerges. We have a solid hope. Hope not just like I hope so, but it is a steadfast assurance. A sure salvation provides a believer with hope for eternity. We're not just here and gone. We're going to live forever somewhere. I want it to be with the Lord, and I know you do too. I want to be with Him in heaven, worshiping and glorifying. And there's there's going to be work to do. I don't know what all it's going to do be, but I want to be ready. I want to be faithful now and be a, be a diligent servant. A holy calling gives a Christian hope for the present through guidance about how to live today in this present life. The incorruptible seed of God's Word provides hope, 
for spiritual growth to those who take time to read, study, and obey its precepts. I appreciate the way that was written. So I just read it exactly as written. So we want to be faithful to read God's Word, faithful to live the life of truth and righteousness every day. Read the Bible every single day. And you know what? We can't, we can't live in a right relationship if we don't pray. Seek God. And not, it's not just saying some words, but it's opening our heart and really praying and seeking the Lord to be like Him and apply His Word and even praying the things, praying the Scriptures. That is a very, very good thing to do. Lord, You said in Your Word, and that's what I'm depending on. He loves to hear us call out His Word. I believe He loves to hear us remind Him, not that He's forgotten it, but He likes to hear us to say, and it's so good sometimes when I read my Bible, sometimes I will read it aloud, and that seems to really, really help me too. And I've mentioned before that sometimes when I'm maybe ironing, especially on those people, many people don't iron anymore, but I still do. And I will sometimes have my tablet sitting there, and I'll have it sit on where the, it, it reads it to me, reads it aloud. And I love it. It just It's amazing how much you can glean hearing that word read. And maybe it reminds you of experiences you've had. It's just, it's just great to know the Lord, to love Him, and to serve Him. Faithfully live for Him. We still have room to grow. I don't care how long we're saved. I've been saved since I was eight years old. I'm telling you, it's still you have to stay in there, keep living for the Lord, loving Him, keep reaching out, because Satan would just love to drag us down no matter how long we've been living for the Lord. In fact, he would like that. The longer we've been living for the Lord, we've been faithful, he'd love to take that person out. But may we put our eyes on the Lord and not be thinking about him, Satan, all the time. We, we're aware of him. But may we just have our awareness really in the Lord Jesus and have our hand in his, loving him and trusting him, reading his word, praying, seeking his face. And remember this, it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. That is in Philippians 2 and 13 from the J.B. Phillips translation. May God bless you and keep you until next Sunday. The Lord will we'll see you back again here um, on the Elgin First Assembly of God page and our, our, our Facebook page. And we hope that you will be able to be in church here in person rather than just have the online. But we're thankful for the online for those who are unable to be in service. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next Sunday. This is Saturday night, but it's Sunday Sunday school lesson. Goodbye.